text is an exhortation. So could be a could be a help or a challenge depending on how you how you go about it. Uh, I exhort you to not let <clears throat> words like election just belong to the Baptists. Yeah. This is it might sound silly to say that. Maybe it should sound silly actually, but uh, some some uh, movements, some churches, some groups have actually just they're they're just content to 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 leave that to the Baptists and kind of just steer around the text and and just just uh, go along their way. Uh, some even a little more subtle. Some uh, have view uh, giving all diligence and the and the correlating uh, promise uh, you shall never fall. I just kind of write that off as well uh, to uh, being saved by works. Well, it just sounds sounds a little too too workish to me, you know, to to really uh, to really go about that. Um, these these are these are both uh, extremes that neither are sanctioned by the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Neither neither are healthy. Uh, faith doesn't move you to to think this way. Men men do. Yeah. You don't walk you don't walk in the light and come up with this uh, with with this conclusion. Well, we, Peter uh, things must have been a little hazy to Peter. He shouldn't have shouldn't have, shouldn't have said that. In fact, faith never does. It won't move you to receive a word like this, whether Paul wrote it or Peter wrote it or Jude or John or James or whoever wrote it. You don't receive it as the word of men. You receive it as it is in truth, the word of God. Because Peter is not speaking out of the, the ingenuity of his own, of his own thinking. He's, he's being moved by the Holy Spirit when he wrote these words. So woe to the people who read the, read the scriptures and just conclude, well, that was, Paul, that was Paul's opinion. Or that was that, that was just how Peter thought about the issue. Now this is how God. I, I don't think we we should even connect the word opinion with God. God doesn't. He's above opinions. God God speaks truth. He speaks righteousness. And woe to the person that doesn't receive it. And so give give all diligence. Make sure that we're taught by the Lord and not by the fair speeches of men. See, the, these are words of Scripture. You don't you don't want to um, uh, slide into this this mode of of, uh, of hearing words and connecting the words of Scripture with what men say. Yeah. You want to connect Scripture with Scripture. Yeah. God has yeah. defined his own, his own words. Uh, Satan has been in the business from the very beginning of redefining things and changing tags around and, and changing words around and giving different meanings and definitions. Uh, that, that, that's, like, that, that's his work as the father of lies. He uh, he leads out in those things, but God is defined. He he has um, there's certain portions of the Scripture like Numbers and Leviticus, and certain portions they're like they're like the index. You know, if you were if you were handed a technical manual, uh, it, it can and you don't and you're unfamiliar with the with the subject. It wouldn't have to be a technical manual. Anything that you're unfamiliar with, you might want to read the index first, and that's kind of like an introduction. You know, it it introduces you to 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 concepts, to terms, and to things. Well, the Lord has introduced us. Yeah. So when he said, when Peter says election, the Lord has already defined it. Amen. He chose Abram. Yeah, that's right. He chose David. He chose Israel. He chose Moses. So when you when you get to this point where Peter's talking about the election and the elect. This is not a brand new thing. Peter didn't just come up with this. You, got, you can trace this election all the way back through all of Scripture, and so it's not, it's not a strange thing. But see, to some religious people, this is a strange thing. It's not. See, what is strange is people saying, God cast a vote for you, and the devil cast a vote for you, and then you cast a deciding vote. That's what's strange. It's not a man that wills or a man that runs, but of God that showeth mercy. So the word diligent, I like it. I like that word, give, give, giving all uh, diligence. In fact, Peter liked that word too. Um, I like becoming familiar enough with the writers of Scripture that you can you you kind of you kind of know them. You know, I feel like I, I'm I'm familiar with Paul. I uh, we don't know know them uh, after the flesh, as he as Paul himself said. Uh, but but we do get to know them. Uh, that that just sounds like Paul to me. That's why I'm comfortable in saying that that Paul wrote the book of Hebrews because it just feels like Paul to me when I read it. Well, Paul Peter liked the word diligent. He'd already used it two times in this in this chapter. Just giving all diligence in verse five, and then he goes, "Add to your faith, add to your faith, add do, add this and add this." Giving all diligence, and then he wraps it up that that series of exhortations. He wraps it up with, "Wherefore the rather brethren." 
Give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Nothing, anything short of that is just isn't going to cut it. You're going to come up empty. That's the fact of the matter. Your, your soul and the salvation of God, which is aimed at your soul, is worth all diligence. And it's a, it's a, it's a blotch on the canvas of, of religion for people to be half-hearted. It's just it's a stench in his nostril, and he hates it. He would you it would you you'd be better off being hotter, uh, just being cold rather than being lukewarm. See, given all diligence is being is being hot, is being no there's no there there's no uh, no question no question mark in your heart or in the other guys. See, not giving all diligence means there's a question in your own mind as to the validity of salvation, or even the validity of your need for salvation. We see, when a person's convicted, then they don't have a, part, they don't have a problem giving this all diligence. Because when the, see the, when the fear of God, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And people, with the, with the fear of God, coupled with the conviction of the Holy Spirit, then that, see, that produces this all diligence. Because um, you, you'll have the, more people need to have the experience of David where their bones waste away because of their own sins. And then, you have, then you'll find that's where people are more serious about what God says. Amen. When they're convicted and when, they're, when, the, when they sense the mighty hand of God. That's another thing that Peter said. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. I sense that Peter, people, the way people talk today about the gospel and about the truth, they don't sense that it's a mighty hand. And it is mighty, brother. So the word diligent has, has to do with vigor. Uh-huh. Is giving all your strength, investing everything you have, leaving, leaving nothing, giving all diligence a, in, a, uh, in a crude way of saying it, is just wearing yourself out. Yeah. Just wear yourself out for this. People wear themselves out for something. They use, them, they use themselves for something. Right. See, the gospel's worthy. The gospel's worthy of, you, of just wearing yourself out for it. Uh, making haste, giving diligence is making haste, is uh, giving all thy might, giving all of your might, investing everything you have. See, the, even the world, the world has, it, it has enough sense to applaud people that give all, give all their might to something. They won't, they won't applaud you for giving it to the, Lord, to the Lord, but they do applaud people, be an author or... You know, whatever it is that they hold in high esteem, then they, they recognize that. Right. See, that's like a faint glimmer of the image of God, where they, they see that these people, they've attained this, this mastery, this excellence, because they've given all thy might. Do, so, so do it heartily. Mm-hmm. In other words, you, we, should, we should be convicted when somebody in the world gives more to the world than we give to the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. This isn't right. Yeah. These yeah. Thi- yeah. We ought to say, these things ought not to be. See, they're giving, no, no person, no creature made in the image of God should be able to, and they can't actually because this is, goes against nature. In giving their capacities that were made in the image of God, fallen though it is, they're giving those capacities wholly to the world, it's wrong. Yeah. Because it's, they're, 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 they're fornicating mm-hmm. what God has given them to in making themselves enemies of God. Now think about this in comparison. When you give your heart, your mind, your soul, your spirit, your, your thought, your passions, your loves, your desire, you give it wholly to the Lord, giving all diligence. Yeah. See, you can actually outdo the world because what God gave you is meant for him. Amen. It's not meant for the world. Mm-hmm. So having done all, the, the Lord used uh, the word violence. The, the kingdom suffereth violence and, and the violent take it by force. Mm-hmm. I like the newer versions, like New American Standard, uses the word forceful. Forcefully advances, and the forceful take it by force. Yeah. Well, I like, I like the word violent. Yeah. It, it, yeah. it seems to, it, it kind of has, has a jarring effect on your, uh-huh. on your ears as you hear it. The violent take it by force. Well, the devil means business. Yeah. And do you think that he is really affected by people who don't? Yeah. Like, we are, we're wrestling against principalities and powers in heavenly places. How do you think you're going to fare by just giving a little bit every once in a while when it's convenient and when there's... See, it just, does, it just won't turn out well for people like this that don't give all diligence. Now this... Um, think about it this way. Be, be exhorted by this. We should see the saved... Include yourself in this. We should see the saved giving all 
seeing that the Lord has given all to save. Yeah. See, that's a reproach. Yeah. This is reproachful for the Lord to invest all in saving and then for the, the subjects of salvation to just reciprocate with 50%. Yeah, that's right. This isn't right. He has given us, blessed us with all spiritual blessings. And then men just give a little bit to, to attain them. He has freely, he would freely give us all things, even his son. See, he, he's, his gift is worthy of giving all diligence. Amen. All things pertaining to life and godliness. See, this, these, these in, insipid approaches of, at, uh, towards the Lord... They actually, they're, a, they're like a lying testimony because they're, what they're saying is that this is what salvation is worth. Yeah. So leave, leave a good testimony. If you do these things. Well, so much for no ifs in the Bible, right? That's right. Peter never got that message. If you do all these things. Uh -huh. See, add to your faith. Brother Jonathan mentioned yeah. he's gotten it. If you do all these things, he's summing up. Add to your faith. That's Virtue, knowledge, temperance, godliness. If you do all these things, then you'll, you'll never fall. What about doing? Well, brethren, we, ought to be, we, we have to be serious about doing. Amen. See, there, I, I've sensed in myself, and I, I don't mean this to be a, a, um, a correction, except to myself. If you need to be corrected by it, then you, you see to that. But I know I've been corrected. By this, by this inclination towards, um, it, it was, well, let me just say it. By thinking, well, if, if I believe, then all these things will happen. Is it? But believing's the point. Yeah. See, I've I have said I've said several things along this along these lines over the years of this, this will happen. This uh, this is automatic. This will naturally follow. Well, that's true in the context of people giving all diligence. Yeah. It where people are believing. Where people are walking in the Spirit, Amen. then yet, but see the crux, yeah. the real issue is that you walk in the light. That's right. Then, see, brother, brother Jonathan said it so well, don't be afraid to say things like that to people who are walking in the light. That's, right. that's how, Amen. That, that, that's where, that's where people, people draw back. They say, delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. If you're walking in the, Lord, in the light... Well, then, of course, the Lord will delight to give you your delights because when you're in the light, you want what he wants. Amen. You delight what he, in what he delights in. You see, so, um, so but, but see, there's got to be doing. You, we, brethren, we have got to feel the urgency of doing these things. Otherwise, you, you, will, you will be found along, along the way. You'll, you'll, be, you'll end up being like the man on the... On left for dead mm -hmm. on, the, on the road that leads down to Jericho unless you do these things. Mm -hmm. If you do, Paul said, I keep under my body. Mm -hmm. And just, just remember that. About the time you think that you're, you're doing pretty well and you can kind of let off the throttle a little bit, just remember, Paul said, uh, I keep under my body, lest I myself be a castaway. Right. So, so much for just losing yeah. a little bit of reward yeah. because being a castaway doesn't sound like you still make it. That's right. Repent and do the first works. And Jesus said that to his church. That's right. Or, that's to Ephesus, Revelation chapter 2. Or I will come and take away your candlestick. Yes. Amen. That means they'd be rejected. Yeah. So don't, don't get it wrong. Mm -hmm. Unless they repent and they do the first works. Mm -hmm. See, people are, people are too cultured with what men have said about the Bible instead of being cultured by the scriptures themselves. So let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Let us lay hold on eternal life. Well, I thought it was a free gift. Well, it is. <laughs> lay hold on eternal life. See, Brother Given said, I wrote this in my notes last week while I was teaching. I don't normally make notes while I'm teaching, but last week it was I, I received a lot while I was teaching. Brother Given said, people have have made, tried to make uh, salvation too simple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you, boy, you, boy, you keep boiling it down, and you boil it down, and, and simplify it, and simplify it, and you end up with nothing. That's right. you, it'll just boil away. That's right. 
Lay hold on eternal life. Well, I thought it was just given to me. It is. Lay hold on eternal life. See, you've got to let the Lord say what the Lord said and just receive it as it is the Word of God. So I, I exhort you with that exhortation, and thank you, Brother Jonathan, for your, your labors. Yes. Now we Amen. open up for any of the, that the brethren have to say. Brother Bob.